I'm John Fisher, uh, I'm 85 years of age, born in Bolly Martin, lived in Bolly Martin all my life. Uh, Fishers have lived in Bolly Martin since 1647, when that goes back. And we're still living on the same farm. And uh, certainly I know quite a few things and much of the time I did prayer the ditches and you were right with a bull out and cutting bushes and your dad would have said to you that's not much of a job you done there but you better sort yourself out and do it a bit better but uh, that's the way it goes. Well I'm Norma Fisher, uh, I was reared and the close was Norma Hannah and was reared there all my life until I met John here and got married. 1959. Yeah, well, we had a couple of bars or three bars at home actually where the cattle were put in in the winter time and uh, there was no water in the bars that had to be let out uh, for a drink of water during the day at some stage and uh, there was uh, what they called a group behind them where the, the, the cows uh, dung gun and that had a, you had to get in the wheelbarrow and clean it out. So uh, uh, we had a shade, yeah, which is for keeping hay and straw and meal on. Uh, it was known as the shade. And uh, the, they were just, the general houses were referred to as outhouses. We had a, a, another wee one called a pig crew and uh, where the word crew come from I don't know but it was just for keeping a, a pig gun and uh, I see that uh, you were ta I was talking about uh, cleaning out the bars and uh, that was I mean, in the double which was only a heap of uh, dung out in the yard and that was just known as the double Whenever uh, we would have had, my dad had sheep and we would have went to the mountain with sheep and uh, to get them separated out, we had common grazing on the mountain and uh, there was uh, bits of stone, they were known as bucks, or where you could have put the sheep into to cut them separated, or if you had some other guys brought on a little of yours, you could have separated it as out and let them go. We hadn't many shucks on our ground because the ground in Bally Martin was good self draining ground and uh, there was one or two shucks which was basically just a, a drain along the side of the field and, and in the summertime it would have been dry anyway. Hence the steer, the same, here is literally a shuck water because the water in the shuck never really flowed very much. And um, we used to work, my dad always worked with the potatoes and uh, whenever I was a number there wasn't many potato diggers about then and uh, they clotted the potatoes. Clotting my hoop was, uh, my father would open uh, the drill with the plows, the same plows that made the drills, split the drill split every other one and a couple of people would go down with a a potato basket or a pirta basket between them and they just clotted it, it out with their hands and put the spuds up in the basket. Whenever the basket was full they carried it to a pit, what was known as a pit, which was just a heap of potatoes. That would have usually made them about nine or ten yards long and about three or four foot high and they were heaped up like an A shape and uh, that was a pretty pat and then they covered them with sprit which was uh, rushes on grass, on grassy rushes in that old fact and they covered them with that and then put some soil on it. So, uh, that was basically the sort of the spud end of it. And then as I got older, 
my dad got a bit of a dagger and under, under the usual and gathered. Some of the old men in the names were older things like uh, a weasel for a stoat and your uh, a jellic. A jellic was a near way, what we know as a near way. Yeah, I've heard the, the badger called Brock, right enough, yeah. And uh, the mouse was a mouse and the hedgehog, he was a urchin. And uh, the bumblebee was the bumbees and rabbits. And for a rabbit, yeah. So, uh, the play, they were a great thing for startling horses. Whenever uh, the farmers had horses at a certain time of the year, most of the tags were only, I think, about in about August time. Um, they were really a horse play, but they did have a mighty sting right now. And they uh, stung the horses, and the horse would have bowled it maybe, or cattle would have bowled it as well. You get stung and they come up in a big lump and never get stung in many times. Hey, Slaters. Oh, there's a good one, yeah. Slaters. Slaters was Stones. the. They were the, the woodlice. Uh, they were just known as Slaters in all my days. And the clocks, which was uh, a little black beetle, uh, yeah. horse clocks. Yeah. He was the bagger. Mm. Yeah. The woolly whitetails. The Yornies, yellow hammers, oh, yeah. you never see them now. They're very, very subtle. Snake, was, uh, known as the Heather Bleat. And the Lark was known as the Lumbery. It's not there. And we have a thrush, yeah. Yeah, the potato gallers, but the. Uh, uh, Drug came to the field usually. Tea was made, and, and my mother would have brought out uh, pieces of bread, yeah, uh, maybe jam sandwiches, or if she was feeling good, maybe a bit of ham on them, or something like that. And the yards just sat down along the, the ditch and uh, dug their tea and ate their. Pieces on the never road, and we're getting our hands washed and our butter all that. Farmer to you a bit of a tunnel off for clodding because you always were throwing the spuds at some of the yards and they were throwing them back and, and sometimes run into a bit of a, a real riot and uh, they never liked to see you doing that. But that was uh, clodding spuds right enough. There was a couple of friends at home and they called them the big home and the wee home. The wee home, it was laid just along the river nearly and that was just to distinguish when you were putting sheep or cattle out and say, were you putting them to the wee home or the big home? And there was a gate between the two and they were separated. There's another one called the Barley Park. Because there's usually barley that grew in that field for quite some time. I was the top field and the bottom field and the middle field, <laughs> near field and the far field. We had uh, Manasses, a field called Manasses Field and a field called Frank Horse Field. And they were both Scottish extracts. Cat sheep, whenever the sheep was, was uh, at home on the, on the mountain, they had to live. A langle on. A langle was a piece of rope from a front leg to a back leg. And it kept them from running too hard, but they still were able to get over the ditch if that wasn't very good. And then you'd have been sent to a bird at the ditch. Bird in the ditch. Really, man, cutting a bush or a thorn and putting it in the gap in the ditch, which was the bad place in the ditch, and putting a stone or something on top of it to keep it from blowing away, and you hope that you got your sheep on along with the lion. You're building a dry stone ditch, which is um, 
And I used to go to them to try stone walls, but they're just done. One stone on top of another stone, you start off in the bottom with big ones, which are known as the butters. And uh, you try and get them in a state line and reasonably level on the top so that you can get another one to sit on top of them. And then you come on with a sagginer, and which is one a bit smaller, and then the thirder, which is a bit smaller again. And then you finish off the top of the ducks with it. Small ones or spallies or whatever. So uh, it's a heavy job. Not so heavy now. It used to be in my days, only the boys that was on it, they rolled the stones up with plank to get them up the ditch. But now I have uh, lifters on the digger. And uh, you can just set them on very handy. Reading up, as I would have understood it, was clearing up in the evening and getting there, finishing up whatever you had to do. And, uh, and so that was reading up to me, yeah. I never really got a good reading up. Maybe I deserve it. <laughs> you would have uh, got the unblown rag and brought it up for the fields. Although, having said that, we had a rack bed, what was known as a rack bed, out in the whole day. Uh, five acres of a rack bed out there. Now, I never was out at it. Well, it was out there. My dad took me one time to show me where it was. But uh, he had uh, cut right. The rack bed really consisted of a complete spleenness. That was a portion of ground, well, as I say, we had five acres. And what they done was they took stones out there about the uh, size of your head, the size of a football, lot, size of stone, and they put it on the Mill Bay ground, which was sandy mud. And the rack would have grown on these stones. So after about a couple of years growing, they would have out and cut the rack with a hook. And that was loaded on carts and brought home. Uh, now, I do remember my father bringing rack home from the old bay, but he brought it home in a lorry. He already loaded it right enough. And that was used for putting up on the drills before he pulled out the potatoes or the sponge. So, Yes, we still have the right bed out there, although I think maybe there's oysters on it now, but uh, <coughs> I never, yes, I remember that, but yes, we did uh, use a lot of the unblown stuff, which just come in if there was a southerly gale, there would have been a lot of uh, unblown rack would have come in down below us and uh, the farmers who had land that ran down to the shore were entitled to use it. Sunday at home, now especially now the Nicholson family, they were reared in the houses now called Tommy's. Mm -hmm. And when it came Saturday, they had to all polish all the shoes and they were all sitting in a row, there were seven of them. And they all had to be cleaned. The water had to be carried from the well for there was no running water then or later on water. And all that had to be done. There was no work done whatever. And the only work done in my own house was the feeding of the cow. And you had to carry the hurricane lamp at night. There was no electricity then. And at nine o'clock at night, when the dog nearly had to go out, I had to carry the hurricane lamp till the cattle were fed. And they were fed then. <coughs> the baskets, they cut the turnips and the mangled and the pulper and they were sitting in the baskets and they were cut usually on a Saturday evening and they were sitting for Sunday. There was no no work at all done then. Well even even yet we we don't do nothing on a Sunday night. John wouldn't be out mowing for bill or nothing like that. Sunday has about our house, anyhow. About the most farmhouses, yeah. 
that's still got there. Yeah, the close was one place where they gathered and the different people gathered in, especially uh, over at Yurts, Peggy Yurts and her family. And they would have done a lot of that. And they brought it in and they done this flowering and they took it to, I think now somebody said, it was Seaford was one of the places where they had to go and that had to be taken and they, they got paid for what they'd done. And they got the material was delivered to them and they'd done the work. And it was the same in later years, there was the iron jumpers and the stuff the time the Zachaleses were in the town, they give out the wool and the iron jumpers. But long before that, I remember like uh, Mrs. Yurt and Mrs. Nicholas in the mall, they would have knitted and got paid for their knitting. There was a factory where they took it in. Well, the scullery, a lot of places, it was a sort of a, a night shot from the, the kitchen. But ours was under the stairs and it was closed then, and there was a place in it, what they called a safe, and that was for keeping meat and everything in to keep flies and that off it. And it was a wooden structure with a very fine mesh door on it, and that was kept there. And the scullery, well, there was, we were big butter makers, to churn twice a week, and the churn, and the churn wasn't kept in it, it was kept outside in another house, but the separator, what they called, the separator for separating the cream from the milk, it was kept in the scullery. Right. There was a special wee table and all it was kept in, and that was where, that was worked there. And the utensils for making the butter and all were kept in the scullery. Right. We had a parlour we called it. Yeah, we called ours the parlour as well. Well, the, the only time that, that was that ever I seen that I used was never the monster was coming to visit. The monster was coming to visit it maybe then, maybe once a year. And uh, of course, that was only the good room where the parlour was open, table on, it and whatever the best uh, cutlery that was in the house, I suppose, and that was. Uh, that was the only time the good room was ever used in our house, anyway. And then there was a, a ferry fort which was behind um, the Cardney Road there where that young fellow McGuffin lives now. In at the back of it, there was what they called a the ferry fort. And it was all um, thorns right round, quite high thorns. And it was in the shape of a, a sort of an angle. And it was supposed to be very superstitious to take that away. Where you hang the horseshoes, always hang them uh, up ways, never put them down. Of later years, when my daddy got a tractor, then there was the harness with the emblems on the harvest, the brass. And actually, where they are now, they're hanging up in George's house in the close, right side of the fireplace. But that was the usual case where a lot of the people put those things. They were all open fire then. They were supposed to be for good luck as well, yeah. They yeah. used to bury the, the horseshoes as well. In places. If they were building a wall or something, a driveway to a house or something. You'd even have seen them in places on the, the uh, pillar or maybe mm -hmm. in the gate or whatever. But I think that's maybe died away now. I remember they were doing, they were raising some of the doors and there was a man working there at the time and I remember my uncle saying be sure and put the penny in. But I never could see it after it was high up. Yeah, I never believed in that sort of stuff to be quite honest with you. But uh, yes, my the time I do fellas that bought the sheep off the, you know, especially sheep. Uh, they always look for a little penny, you know, when you always give them back something. May have been much or it may have been little, but uh, if I had been doing, if I had been buying enough, somebody I wouldn't have worried for another 
always thought it was a silly old thing to be quite honest, but uh, I never, I never believed that. You're done. Normal was done about very good. You know well I walked the roads for years, but all times of the day and night, I never seen a fray. It was just people that gathered in when the, their day's work finished and they picked the different houses at both different nights and they just called these men men rapers for they were just raped from one house to the other. Well, oh, just neighbours. It was just neighbours that got them. Like, probably maybe I could <laughs> be in terms of that as well because I remember in our young days uh, so I mean, Kevin and a lot of us, we raped down to McCullough's. It was pretty McCullough's Bobby and Sammy's and Cecil's and them boys. And we were down there, we would have been there maybe three or four nights a week. And there would have been a couple of fellas playing drafts, four or all fellas playing Ludo and somebody else firing out a dirt board up at the back door. My day, my mother, the Muslim McCullough, didn't chase us for our lives. And uh, that was, I suppose, yeah, that was only young fellas. Like, we were only then, what, 12, 13, 14. But the Raiders were more the mature fellas. At Easter time, the three houses usually, well, more or less two of them, used to get together and we all went to the river and we took the big stones out of the round in the river and made for a fire. The fire was got from the winds, that the weather twins, and that made a good fire. We put the eggs into tins and picked the winds of the bushes and that coloured the eggs. And then when we were finished, the hard boiled eggs we rolled them down the bank. And it was a day's entertainment, we played them and what they called the common, and we played then rounders and hide and seek and all sorts of games. It was just an all days event. My mother, she used to send down a big bag of a big box and, of um, buns and cakes and things like that. So I don't know where it was the eggs or the cake that we enjoyed most. Uh, the 12th was always uh, a big day about our place, there were three houses up there beside us, and uh, they were all, yeah, there was people in the Loyal Orders in the three of them. And uh, certainly uh, everybody was dressed up for the 12th, and you put your Union Jack out, you, the way you went, if you were those of you were in the Loyalists, went to the hall. And those of us who weren't or too young to be, you went with your mother probably and uh, watched the bonds and then went to the field. Sure, it was a great thing to get sandwiches and lemonade. There wasn't much when I was I was remember there wasn't much lemonade going, to, uh, going about. It's not like now. And uh, gee, you thought it was terrific. You were looking forward to it for weeks. And uh, that was certainly, yes, and uh, the people, I know the people in our village all turned out to watch the parade going through, or the bond going through, and uh, if you want anything done, certainly any of your neighbours would have done it for you, irrespective of what religion they were, it didn't make any difference then. I was still at school. And I remember coming home from school and my mum out was in awful panic. She says, hurry up and get a cup of tea for she says an awful thing has happened. We had a goat and these two for my daddy and Uncle Willie, the white shirts were always got ready for the twelfth. And my mummy had watched washed these two white shirts and had them on the line and they were hung up like on the tail and the goat had ate round <laughs> the <laughs> colours of both the shirts. And post haste I had bicycle was on the bicycle then and I was sent down to Kilkeel to McCracken's, which was down where Versailles took over down at the bridge there. And I went down to McCracken's and that was in the eleventh now that it was 
My mummy was really in a panic for not knowing whether they would get them or not. There was no other shops about Kilkeel that kept shirts then. So I went down and uh, old Mr McCracken was there. And sure enough, he got me the shirts when I got home. So the goat was going to be, have to be done away when you leave, but he wasn't, of course, if he <laughs> <laughs>